everybody, I'm Harriet Nelson. You know, around our house, we're great believers in regular brushing of the teeth. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, David and Ricky are upstairs brushing their teeth right now. Oh, hi. I'm David Nelson. I figure if you got to brush your teeth anyway, you might as well use Listerine toothpaste. Oh, my little brother Ricky here feels the same way about it. Yes, sir. I don't mess around, boy. <laughs> Just me, Harriet. I went out to get the mail. Well, you have a lot more courage than I have. There will be a lot of bills there. Well, I figured I'd work up to it gradually. Oh, boy, that perfume you're wearing is really something. Perfume? <laughs> yeah, I thought I smelled it when I was out there by the front door. Oh, I guess I did put some hand lotion on. Well, here's a bill. Here's a bill. And that's all. You've got a whole handful left. I know, but I've had enough for one morning. Oh, sorry. I hope you have better luck. <laughs> Here's a bill. Strike one. Here's another bill. Strike two. Here's an advertisement. No, foul ball. <laughs> oh, honestly, there must be something else here. Anything there for me, Mark? No, I don't think so, David. Why, it's some perfume. Well, thank you, but I don't think I have any more on than usual. You dropped a letter. I did oh. it. Who's it for? Holy smokes. Holy smokes. What's the matter? Is it on fire? I don't know. Take a whiff of this. <laughs> oh, so that's where that was coming from. Well, who's it for? Oh, no. This is impossible. What's the matter? It's for Ricky. <laughs> well, it could be worse. It could be addressed to your father. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of this. I'm starting to get a little dizzy. Yeah, it's a little one, but it sure is powerful. Did somebody call me? Well, it just happens that we were about to. There's a letter for you. I wish you'd claim it. And where is it? Uh, just follow your nose. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Who is it from, anyway? It must be from one of my girlfriends. Smells like ladies' night in a Turkish bath. <laughs> Boy, Bob sure gets around. <laughs> well, come on. Aren't you going to open it? I thought we could just sit here and smell it. Come on, open it, will you? I don't know if I should. It's marked personal. Well, I think it's all right. It's addressed to you. Well, maybe a little mushy. Go ahead, read it. Okay. Don't blame me if you get sick. Heck, the inside can't be any worse than the outside. Come on, hurry up, will you? The suspense is killing your mother. Well, it starts off mildly enough. How are you today, lover boy? <laughs> Sounds like you've made quite an impression on a certain young lady. Oh, I don't mess around, boy. <laughs> well, come on, read the rest of it. I think somebody better censor it first. It's only an invitation. It says, Dear Ricky, how are you today, lover yes, boy? Yes, yes, we heard that part. <laughs> Please go to the dance with me, or else. Or else what? Come on, turn the page, lover boy. Oh, yeah. Please go to the dance with me, or else... I'll have to ask Andy Andrews. And I don't want to ask Andy Andrews to the dance because I don't like Andy Andrews as much as you. And besides, he can't dance. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Please say yes, or you'll break my heart in two. The please is underlined twice. Oh, I see. It's signed, respectfully yours, Julie Thornberry. Well, that sounds very nice. At least I'm glad it wasn't mushy. <laughs> well, we all are. Hey, there's a P.S. Oh, what does it say? I don't know. Some word I can't pronounce. How do you spell it? It's probably XXX. No, it's not that. It's Rizvip. Let me see that. See? R-S-V-P. <laughs> that means she expects an answer. You better write her a little note. Write a note to Julie Thornbury? Well, of course, why not? Well, heck, she only lives next door. Well, that's all right. I still think it'd be very nice to write her a little note. Oh, Mom. Oh, never mind now. I'll help you with it and mail it this afternoon. When will it get there? Oh, tomorrow morning sometime. You know how you like to receive letters. Think of what a surprise it'll be for Julie when she gets an answer in the morning mail. It sure will. The dance is this afternoon. 
Well, of course, that does complicate things a bit. But tell me, is it customary for little girls to invite the little boys to dances these days? Well, it's some kind of a leap year dance that our dancing class is holding. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's still leap year, isn't it? Don't worry, Pop. I'm being real careful. <laughs> well, good for you. How come Julie waited until the last minute to ask you? Well, she didn't. She asked me last week. Oh, then you've already accepted. Well, not exactly. I said I'd think it over. You'd think it over? Well, yes, ma'am. A guy can't be too careful, you know. <laughs> well, I don't know. That seems like a pretty independent attitude to me. Beg your pardon? Aren't you afraid she'll run off with somebody else? Well, how can she? I'm the fastest runner in our class. <laughs> Big deal. Well, nevertheless, I think he's right. After all, you know the old saying, there are plenty of other fish in the sea. Well, if you ask me, that's a pretty dangerous attitude to take. Yeah, you better be careful, Ricky. First thing you know, your big romance will go right down the drain. And Julie's a cute little dish, too. Well, heck, it's just like Pop said. There are plenty of other dishes in the sink. <laughs> well, anyway, you've got plenty of time to worry about girls later on. I should think you'd rather be out playing football than attending some dance with a bunch of girls. Oh, fiddlesticks. I think it's a very nice idea. Well, maybe you're right. After all, he's not going to be playing football all his life, but he will be meeting and associating with people. And girls are people. I'll drink to that. <laughs> oh, I still say if I were you, I'd rather be out playing football with David and the rest of the guys. Heck, I'd rather go to the dance. I don't get it. Whenever I play with those big guys, they always make me play center. <laughs> well, playing center's a lot of fun. For both sides? <laughs> <laughs> the defense rests. Kyle, oh, hiya, Tony. Hi, Oz. Say, that young son of yours is certainly the dapper Dan, isn't he? Oh, what do you mean? I just saw him take off down the street with his hair slicked down and his shoes all shined. From the way he smelled, he must have had on some of your aftershave lotion. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. That was just left over from a letter he received this morning. A letter? <laughs> yeah. Was he on the sucker list of a perfume factory? No, no, nothing as serious as that. But don't tell me there's a fair lady involved. Yes, I'm afraid there is. In fact, it's your daughter, Julie. <laughs> oh, 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 so that's it. Well, all I can say is I certainly feel sorry for Ricky. That young daughter of mine is a very determined young lady. Well, don't worry about Rick. He's a pretty fast runner. Well, he'll have to do more than just run. You seem to forget this is still leap year. She'll take him right over the hurdles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think he'll put up too much of a struggle. In fact, I'm a little surprised at the interest he shows in dancing and girls at his age. Oh, Oz, I think it's wonderful. It'll sure save him a lot of embarrassment later on. Uh, how so? Well, you may not believe this, Oz, but when I was a boy, it was sheer agony for me to even talk to a girl, let alone dance with her. You're kidding. Well, I know it's hard to believe, Oz, but that's just because you're used to the polished drawing room manners I have now. I didn't say that. You don't have to. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I used to be a shy, retiring, self-conscious youth. Uh, now, now, just a second. It was only about three weeks ago you sat right in my living room and claimed you used to be quite a boy with the girls. Well, Oz, that was later on. When I was a small boy, I was shy and self-conscious. I find that rather hard to believe. Well, nevertheless, it's true, and it was only through painful effort that I was able to overcome it. You're kidding. Nope. And today, if I saw an attractive girl, I could walk right up to her, introduce myself, and talk very easily, and maybe ask her for a dance or two. I wouldn't have a handicap in the world. <laughs> Except my wife, of course. <laughs> But believe me, Oz, you ought to be tickled to death that Ricky's so easy in mixed company. And according to the rumors I hear, he's quite the lady killer. Well, you know the old saying, like father, like son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the saying. What about it? Uh, you wonder Ricky should turn out to be a lady killer? Junior grade, of course. Well, I can see where you might have gotten by okay in your youth. No, 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 wait a second, Thorny. Don't you go around telling everybody I used to be a devil with the girls or they couldn't resist me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Oz, I won't. I uh, hope not. not. However, if you should happen to blurt it out by mistake, don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't think there's any danger of that happening. You know, I never realized what a strong influence I must have had on the boys. Well, it's strange of you to overlook it. Those smooth manners, those fine social graces. Little of it must have rubbed off on them. Well, now that you're getting back to normal, I think I'll be running along. You see, what we don't realize, Thorny, is that a boy naturally identifies himself with his father. 
Now, you may say yeah, that you're yeah, yeah. young I, for that sort of... Oz, Oz, just let go of my arm. I've got to be running along. Well, what's your hurry? For goodness sake, stop pulling away. Oz, you're hurting my arm. Well, then stop interrupting me. Me? You're the one that's doing all the interrupting. Well, then stop interrupting me when I'm interrupting you. <laughs> Talk about smooth social grace and good manners. You're positively childish at times. Oh, yeah? What about yourself? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. Hello, Mr. Thornberry. Uh, hi, Hello, son. Ricky. I'm going to dance now, Pop. Oh, that's nice. Well, be sure and act like a little gentleman. Yes, sir. Be careful of your manners. Yes, sir, I will. Have a good time, Rick. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, have a good time, son. <laughs> I had to chip off the old block. <laughs> you know, oh, Tony... Oh, I'm oh, sorry. No, I, I, I beg your pardon. No, no, no I interrupted no, I, you. No, I interrupted you. You were just about to say something. I'm awfully sorry, Tony. What was you going to say? Well, I was just going to say that... Uh, gee, he's a fine fella. <laughs> Thanks, Lernie. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you. Yeah, take it easy, guys. <laughs> Did you go to a dancing class when you were a little girl? I did. Every Saturday afternoon in our town, the dancing class would meet at the Woman's Club Auditorium. A very pleasant, chubby little lady would play the piano, and the girls would sit around and giggle, and the boys would wait expectantly for the ice cream and cake to arrive. In <laughs> fact, I think that's the only reason they ever showed up at all. You know, things haven't changed very much since then. Ricky's gone down this afternoon to the Woman's Club to attend the dance given by Mrs. Davenport's dancing class. See. Yep. I would guess it's just about time for the refreshments to arrive. Hi. Oh, hi, David. You come over here to ask me to dance. I'm sitting this one out. Yeah, so I noticed. What are you doing over here anyway? Well, and I just stopped by to see how the dance was going. Where's Julie? She's over there getting some refreshments. Why didn't you get them? I did. I got mine right here. <laughs> I mean, Julie, you're supposed to get your partners too, you know. Heck, I can hardly carry my own. <laughs> Besides, she wanted to talk to some girls about something. Is it a pretty good dance? I'll tell you as soon as I taste the cake. The rest of this dance is as good as this cake. Boy, it's the best dance I've ever been to. <laughs> sure got enough there. How about sharing some of that with an old friend? I don't believe I caught your name, stranger. <laughs> Come on, don't give me any of that stuff. Don't worry, I won't give you a thing. Is there any way to treat your own brother? Your own flesh and blood? Please, I mean. <laughs> this is supposed to be a dance, you know, not a picnic. Who told you you could sit over here and stuff yourself with ice cream and cake? Nobody had to tell me. This was my own idea. <laughs> Come to a dance, you're supposed to dance. Are you kidding? I've been dancing every dance. That's why I'm so hungry. Who you been dancing with? Well, who else? Julie Thornberry. Who else? That's all, just Julie Thornberry. You mean you danced every dance with Julie Thornberry? Sure. She brought me here, so she stuck with me. <laughs> well, excuse me, David. I better start eating this ice cream before it gets cold. Have a good time, little man. Where are you going? Well, I think I'll go over and ask for some punch, which I won't get to wash down that cake you didn't give me. I don't think you better get any punch, David. You're punchy enough as it is. <laughs> Well, Thornberry and I stopped off for the dance for a few minutes. Oh, weren't the girls a little young for you two big fellas? Oh, well, sure, but there wasn't anything wrong with the refreshments. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't tell me you guys went down there to grab a free lunch. Oh, no, we had to work for it. Miss Davenport had some furniture and stuff she wanted moved around. Did you see Ricky there? Heck, you couldn't miss him. You know Ricky. Was he having a good time? Oh, sure. I'll bet he was over there dancing around with all the girls. No, funny thing. 
He only danced with Julie Thornbury while I was there. He had every dance with her. You mean he didn't dance with any of the other girls? Just Julie. Oh, well, that wasn't very polite. When you go to a party, you're supposed to dance with all the girls. And Julie invited him. Well, yes, I know, but when your mother and I went to the Randolph's party, I didn't spend all evening dancing with her. I danced the first dance with her. And that's the last I ever saw of him. <laughs> Oh, now, you know that's not true, Harriet. Just isn't considered proper etiquette for a man to dance every dance with his own wife. <laughs> it isn't considered much fun, either. <laughs> I like to dance with you, dear. It's just that a man has to spread himself around. I like to bring a little happiness into every woman's life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, good for you, dear. That's very thoughtful of you. I'll see you later. Uh, oh, Dave, if you see Ricky, tell him we'd like to see him, would okay, you? Okay, Pop. You know, that's a strange thing about Ricky. I should think he'd like to dance with all the girls. That's what makes a party a success. Well, I don't know. Maybe he has a crush on Julie Thornberry. No, oh, I don't think so. He's a little young for that. Well, I wouldn't say that. Don't tell me you didn't have some secret love when you were his age. Well, yes, but it didn't last very long. She married Douglas Fairbanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's no big romance between Ricky and Julie Thornberry. Marilyn Monroe, perhaps, but not Julie Thunder. <laughs> oh, hi, Ricky. Hey, how about the dance? You have a good time? Oh, yeah, it was swell. I understand David stopped by. Yeah. Boy, that guy can smell ice cream a mile away. Uh, he tells me you spent quite a bit of time with Julie Thornberry. Yeah, she was my partner. Yeah, but according to David, you danced just about every dance with her. Yes, sir. Every one. Why didn't you dance with any of the other girls, dear? They didn't ask me. <laughs> now, wait a minute. They're not supposed to ask you. You're supposed to ask them to dance. Yeah, I did, but none of them would. So I figured when they got ready, they'd just come over and ask me. <laughs> you mean you asked all the girls to dance and none of them would accept? Only Julie Thornberry. Well, I never heard of such a thing. Were you polite when you asked them? Oh, sure. They were all sitting around, and I walked up to one girl, and I said, Would you care to dance? And they all started to giggle. And, and she said, no, thank you. Well, that's strange. And then they all started to giggle again. You mean all the girls turned you down? Everyone I asked. I really don't mind, though. I'd rather dance with Julie than anybody else. Are you sure? Oh, sure. All the rest of the girls are taller than I am. <laughs> well, maybe that's why they didn't want to dance with you. I never bothered him before. I'm sure I'm glad I didn't have to dance with Agnes Muller. Well, how tall is she? He's about six feet. <laughs> I wonder why those girls didn't stay home if they didn't want to dance. Oh, they danced with the other guys. Well, I'll see you later. I'm going to shoot a couple of baskets. You better change your clothes. Okay, I will, Mom. Gee, poor kid. Something like this could easily give him an inferiority complex. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. Especially since it doesn't seem to bother Ricky any. Oh, Harriet, of course it bothers him. He's just being brave about it. Poor little guy. Oh, come on in, Thorny. Hi, Oz. Hello, Hi. Oh, Harriet. I thought I'd better stop in and we could talk over in terms of the contract. Contract? What contract? The marriage contract, of course. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like those two kids of ours are pretty serious. I understand they danced every dance together. Ah, uh -huh, that's right. Well, look, Oz, I thought we could just have a simple ceremony. We wouldn't have to make it too late since they both have to get to school the next morning. <laughs> no. And since they're so young, we want to keep an eye on them. So what do you say we build them a tall, thin bungalow right between our two houses? That sounds like a wonderful idea. <laughs> I guess it does look pretty serious at that. Do you think Ricky can support a family, Oz? Don't forget, there are four of us. <laughs> well, you may have to budget yourself a little. He gets a dollar a week allowance. Oh. Well, I'll have to talk to Julie about that. <laughs> uh, she's sure got a crush on that boy of yours. Came home from the dance walking on air. Ricky enjoyed himself, too. Yeah, he says he'd rather dance with Julie than any of the other girls. <laughs> That's like I say, when she gets her mind set on something, there's no stopping her. She gets that from her mother, I guess. Personally, I think it was kind of a mean trick. What was a mean trick? Well, I don't think I should be telling you this, but after all, it's the only fair thing to do. Did Ricky dance with any of the other girls at the party? Uh, no, not a single one. I didn't think so. Well, how did you know? 
Well, for the past month, Julie's been saving up her weekly allowance. She had quite a bundle stashed away. Oh, fine. That'll make a very nice dowry. <laughs> yes, if she still had it. You mean she spent it? She spent every cent of it on Ricky. Well, what was he doing, charging her ten cents a dance? <laughs> she didn't exactly spend the money on Ricky. She spent it for him. I don't get that. Well, to put it bluntly, she bribed every one of the little girls not to dance with him. Oh, so that's why they turned Ricky down. I'm afraid so. That's why I thought I'd come over and tell you so you wouldn't think he was some sort of social outcast. Well, I'll be darned. Boy, Oz, you've got to keep your eye on these women. Do you know where Julie got the idea? No. From her mother. Catherine pulled the same trick on me once at a school dance. Of course, it only cost her 50 cents. Well, everything's much higher these days. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Ricky's really gonna have to look out for Julie when she gets a little older. Oh, it gets a bigger allowance. Yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> well, I guess we'll be running along, Oz. I just thought I'd stop over and let you know what happened so you wouldn't spend a lot of money on personality lessons for Ricky. Yeah, we're glad you did. <laughs> well, I'll see you at the wedding. Bye, Thorny. So long, Thorny. <laughs> How about that? And here we were worried about Ricky's being popular. What these little girls won't think up next, huh? Well, evidently, it must be quite an old trick. Thorny said Catherine pulled it on him when they were kids. Say, wait a minute. This explains something that happened to me when I was a boy. You mean some little girl played the same trick on you? Well, yes, and I just realized it this minute. You see, we had this dance at the high school gymnasium, a leap year dance, and you were only allowed to ask a girl to dance if nobody asked you first. Well, I wanted to dance with all the girls at the party, but this one little girl kept asking me first. She explained it to me at the time, but I didn't believe her. You mean she was paying all the other little girls to stay away? No, 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 no. All the other little girls got together and they paid her to ask me before I... <laughs> <laughs> this was a, a little different situation. <laughs> well, you know how little boys sort of grow in sections? Uh -huh. Well, during this particular phase of my growth, I was, you might say, a medium-sized boy, but I had pretty large feet and a rather big mouth. <laughs> in fact, even to this day, I occasionally open up my big mouth and put my foot in it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm just going out for a little while. Out where? I've got kind of a date. Oh, Julie Thornberry? No, Agnes Muller. Agnes Muller? You mean that tall girl at school? Yes, ma'am. Well, I thought you didn't care for her. Oh, yeah, Mom. She's very nice. I just said I didn't like to dance with her. Well, she's about six feet tall, isn't she? Six feet one. Well, I better hurry up, Mom. I promised to pick her up at seven. Oh, well, wait a minute. Where are you going? And down in the church. We're going to play some basketball. Isn't it time? Time you bought the whole family fresh, clean, new prophylactic toothbrushes. Prophylactic, of course. This world-famous line includes a style, size, and texture for every taste and need. The Pro Tufted, for example, with its special end tuft to get at those hard-to-reach back teeth. Or the new Pro 59, the totally different toothbrush with thousands of extra thin bristles. You never felt a brush so gentle yet so sturdy. Or this brush, specially sized for children's mouths. Look for the prophylactic toothbrush display at any drug counter. Be sure your holiday is fun, not fatal. Be especially alert when driving in heavy holiday traffic. Don't be in such a hurry to get there that you don't get there at all. Speed kills, even on holidays. And remember, too, this important safety rule. If you drive, don't drink. If you drink, don't drive. Have a happy holiday, a safe holiday, but be careful. The life you save may be your own.